We have a new member. Uh, my, my name is Henry. So, Henry, you're a group virgin, huh? <laughs> There's nothing under the sun that you can't talk about here. I'm jealous. I'm overzealous. I haven't talked to my dad in like 15 years. He left when I was 10. I don't talk about my dad. I get angry. Baby, believe me. You have a really hard time do? accepting love. I guess I just want you to see me. But you don't judge me. I went to a bar, and a man came up to me, and he mis mistook me for a call girl. And I played along. I feel crazy saying this. Outside of here, it would be crazy, maybe. Yeah. But inside here, where it's safe, you're just talking. Yeah. What's crazy about that? Here we go. <laughs> What, are you, what is he doing here? In this process, you're gonna find yourself participating in exchanges that you, you don't have in polite company. I think I should leave. What exactly happened between the two of you? This feels really violating. It's not like a dinner party. I put all my cards on the table. How many more things do we need to hear? But you're no. really being an asshole. I don't trust you remotely. You're here to engage people. If someone doesn't like something, it's their job to tell you. Welcome to group. Hey, Alexis. Hello, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. I wish we had mics like yours for all of our actors. This is just improv. <laughs> you know, it puts, you know, it puts the viewer in a good mental state. <laughs> right, right. How are you doing, yeah. Adam? Uh, good. How are you, Jack? Good to see you. I like your virtual uh, background. Uh, yeah, it, it's Alexi's uh, uh, living room in uh, New York. It's a nice where the first season was shot. Right. Um, I, I, I kept looking. I, I just have to make clear that uh, he he's Alexi uh, because he is French. Uh, okay, je comprends. Ah, très bien. On va pouvoir faire tout en français alors. Merci bien, yes. Uh, J'essaie, je, j'essaie, j'essaie. Uh, Parlez français? That's oui. about the, uh, the, uh, the extent, Jack. Jacques. More than I can do. We can't, we can't do the whole thing in French, you mean? We'll re well, what we'll do is do it in English and then we'll redo it in French. There okay. You, <laughs> um, you know, as I was watching some of the episodes of your, your uh, web series, it's almost... Uh, it's all, it, uh, I don't know, it, it's so well done. I almost want, I, I don't know, like calling it a web series. It's a web series. Call, I know, well, well, see then I was thinking to myself, uh, my brain is working faster than my mouth. So I was thinking uh, it's such a good production. This is like, you know, serial television, episodic television quality, you know, but then I'm thinking, well, don't, piss all over a web series. This just elevates web series, the idea of a web series, it's all, which could be just every bit as effective, right? As yeah, any yeah. other. We do uh, want it to be a conventional television series. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was not intended as a web series. No, oh, okay. So I don't know, are we going uh, straight We're just jumping in, we're diving in. We're, di uh, yeah. That's how the show goes. I, I, I apologize. It no, no, no problem at all. Okay. No, it, it started as possibly a feature film. Then quickly, I wanted to do a oh. episodic format. I come from feature film. So uh, that was my initial thought. Um, and I acquired the rights to the book. And I started writing the dialogue. And I started writing a you know 100 pages script. And I, I didn't like it enough. So I both decided to really go episodic and 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 go uh, with one session you know in the book it's every session every chapter is a session every other chapter is actually a session of group every other other uh, other chapter is a uh, is the storyline of Arthur Schopenhauer the, the original book 
is called uh, The Schopenhauer Cure. Um, it's written by Irvin Yalom, who is uh, one of the uh, giants of uh, group therapy. Uh, literally wrote the textbook on group therapy. When, when, when was that, Jack? Or uh, uh, he he did that work in the you know forties, fifties, sixties. But uh, um, uh, he's he's now quite elderly, but uh, still oh, working. Still alive. And he's also uh, a novelist, and uh, this is one of his novels, uh, the Schopenhauer oh. Cure. Interesting. I, I should say, by the way, uh, last thing I'll offer up uh, by, uh, I guess, what's the expression? Laying out your cards to make sure uh, so there's no full. Putting your cards on the table, full disclosure. Full disclosure. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, my parents were in therapy at, at my entire childhood. They were in group therapy. They were in. Uh, wow. We had a family therapist um, in the sense that. Dr. Factor was like part of the family. I mean, uh, he was at my sister's wedding. I mean, that was the closest he came on a personal level to ever yes. leaving the therapy room, but he did go. He had a very close relationship with my sister in that way. When he died, my sister was very, very, uh, you know. He was uh, the second father. Uh, yeah, the, yes, there was some of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but we all attended at some point or other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, so I'm watching this, and then, uh, and and I don't think you need to have that group therapy experience to fully appreciate the 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 uh, the artistry of this series. But uh, very very easily get sucked into this and emotional watching it. I mean, you know, within moments. So well, well done. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well, we should go back to the uh, origin story, which Alexei just started on. Please do. And and don't hesitate to interrupt me because as Jack knows, you can push on a button, I can talk for four hours. So uh, uh, on 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 this particular topic. So just just interrupt me when you feel it's getting too too detailed or long-winded or going off. Well, as Dr. Ezra even says, it's we're New Yorkers, so well, you're French. <laughs> Dad, we can interrupt. <laughs> well, I've yeah, been yeah. in New York for 20 years, you know, so I I, I am now a, a resident of New York. Um, so yeah, the structure, uh, listen, to me, what, what the project is about is the method, uh, finding the method, uh, mm -hmm. which involved going episodic, uh, doing one session per episode, uh, working with a real psychoanalyst, um, and with actors. Um, and shooting in a way that is very unconventional, which is really uninterrupted 90 minute takes um, with a, you know, um, a combination of very scripted characters, very scripted character, uh, you know, narrative arc, but free dialogue. Um, it is like a piece of free jazz that is, you know, the tone is set the um, the, key, the you know the lots of things are set, but the actual uh, note variations uh, are of the moment. It is the inspiration of the moment, and I came to that uh, notion that it was critical to have genuine improvisation in the dialogue, with very structured, scripted characters, combined with a real therapist who is not trying to be an actor, who's doing his thing um, by you know, trying the more conventional way of writing a script. Uh, very quickly, I wanted to do episodic, but you know, in the fashion of writing all the dialogue. Uh, and it just didn't sound quite right. And I went to a convention of group therapy to look for a consultant to help me write the dialogue. And I found, Dr. Zeisel, this gentleman, uh, who after a while, you know, I talked to a number of people and he says, you know, I'm interested to talk to you, but if you're serious about your project and if you want to make it different than what's been done in the past 30 or 40 years when psychoanalysis process or psychotherapy process is uh, on screen, you've got to experience it yourself. Uh, you, you, it can't be secondhand, uh, you know, for the past 30, 40 years, we keep seeing great actors doing a good to mediocre job in the actual portraying of the process of the work. 
uh, they can do great things about other elements of the life, personal life of a, of a therapist, of a psychiatrist, of a psychoanalyst. But when it comes to the process, it becomes clumsy. It becomes, it, it becomes contrived. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't make the music the real thing. So I joined his group. He invited me to join a group of his for six months to do my research. And I did this. And after a couple of months and trying my, you know, feel in this strange conversation style of, of group therapy, I realized I wanted for sure, because I didn't have that idea initially, to cast him, I mean, to cast a professional therapist and ideally him uh, in the part, as opposed to an actor who would imitate um, to cast actors who had the gift and the skill, which is a trained skill of improvisation, but could understand uh, the necessity to go deep in the creation of characters that would have a combination of, you know, scripted fictional elements based on the book, based on what I created. It, you know, the fictional scripted parts are really 50% from the book, 50% from myself. And then, of course, they would blend it, personal element of their life. But they, I, I told them it was critical that they would not tell anybody, including me, which part was the, how they did their blend, because I wanted their blend to become a second nature to them. I didn't want them to be self-conscious about which is, you know, um, everything is real for actors. They believe in what they do. When they create a character, the character becomes real. That's where you know, good acting takes place. And, you know, I, I, I'm part of the actor studio playwright unit. Uh, and I was really um, impressed by how much parallel and how much uh, common ground there was between the exercise actors do in this, you know, traditional good work of the actor's studio going back to you know, Elia Kazan and all the great work of the 50s and the 60s and, and, and Kazanets, and, and, which was not actor's studio. But the type of work that was done in the 60s. Sorry, I, I have a sort of double thing happening here. Am I still with you? Yes. Yep. I, I was Zoom bombed by my. I was sorry. I was Zoom bombed by myself. I had two zoomed in parallel. Oh. <laughs> Something <laughs> happened. Sorry. Um, Did it correct itself? I turned it off, not by itself. <laughs> oh, I mean, um, the, phone, the phone. It went. Uh, anyway. Yeah, the phone. It, it, anyway, it's 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 good now. Uh, so, the way actors and I've seen, you know, as a filmmaker, I worked with actors just to train myself in how actors work. And I find it a good inspiration for uh, character building. But the technique, the, the granular technique of uh, actors exercising, creating roles was so vividly um, similar to what is required from uh, group members in uh, modern analysis group therapy, which is the type of group therapy that goes on there. Uh, which is a capacity to, to develop a capacity to be in the moment and to be uh, confident enough about the method itself that you don't have to force any agenda, any, you know, you ask actors not to say the line with a certain intention, a preconceived intention uh, on the set. Uh, I found myself several times asking actors to just do it again in a way that is not what they wanted to do initially when they woke up in the morning saying, I want to do this scene this way, but to take the chance of absorbing what the other actors or the context of the day was giving them to react, uh, to absorb it and to, and to use it. Um, that's where I come from in terms of filmmaking and working with actors. I found that it was really exceptionally uh, similar to what a group leader in group therapy is asking the, the group members to do, which is to uh, try not to bring too much from the outside of the room in, but really be present in the moment and react to what goes on in the interaction, the interrelationship between the group members in the moment in the room. This is where it becomes, um, uh, this is where it becomes real, great, unusual, and special. 
And uh, yeah, I my, my long-winded answer is that in order for this to happen, it's a form of, um, you know, eight subconscious minds, eight minds letting their own subconscious react to one another, trusting the method enough, trusting the, the context, the setting, and trusting the group leader enough that they don't need to control everything they say. They can let themselves go more freely and improvise. And when they improvise in the style of group therapy, they don't improvise in a super controlled way, saying lines. They improvise with what they think, their real thoughts and real emotions, like actors, good actors do with the, the good method of, of the actor's studio. They use real emotions of the moment in the room and what the others, uh, you know, other characters give them on the day. And when I realized there was such a parallel uh, between the process of group therapy and what I had learned uh, at the actor studio and on set working with actors on, you know, through 30 years in film, I realized this is something special. It cannot be written. The dialogue cannot be written if the characters are structured enough. If the characters are you know, trusting their own method in creating, the actors are trusting the method in creating the characters, then they can relax and let the words take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And then it makes that particular music. And, and then frankly, the real work begins. And then the therapeutic process begins as well. And um, so after two months doing research in group, I thought, that's really the interesting way of shooting this, is to have a real therapist who will really create uh, the feeling of trust and expertise and skill, and it's an art form to be able to do this at the level he does. Um, and, and have actors who will be confident in their own skills enough to basically go and surf that wave and that group wave. Uh, and, and um, so I came with this idea of shooting uninterrupted 90 minute takes of shooting with a real uh, therapist and, and, shoot, and, and with improvised dialogue. Um, wow. Which, is, uh, you know, so it, and it becomes a whole mess to be frank. Uh, <laughs> the, the result is like a, a, it is like, it's full of uh, precious metal. It's like, you know, it's, it's like a, a a bizarre uh, mountain with, with uh, you know, nuggets of gold uh, buried right. into uh, sort of nasty looking stuff. Um, For a start, you had to convince Elliot Zizel, uh, the therapist, to actually <clears throat> be in it. Well, it took well, me yeah, one Yeah, like, was the, there... It took me one I don't know if there's an ethical uh, issue. I mean, I don't see it because it's, it's, it's newly scripted content and it's, it's more of a matter of his relationship with his actual patients, if you call them that, within a group. Uh, I would mean, say one thing and then talk about, you could talk about Elliot. It's yeah. his name, Elliot, right? And, then, yes. and he, he looks like he's an Elliot, <laughs> 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 whatever that means. But I wanted to say this, what comes emerges, I have a lot of thoughts about what you said. And by the way, as a, as a sidebar, uh, Alexi, you're the perfect podcast guest because you bring so much and you talk, you have, uh, you are so eloquent about your process and about the, but I hope you're going to edit. You don't have it. to pry anything out of you. I love that. No, I, tr I trust your editing skills because no, you know, no, no, there's no, edit. this much. is verite. It's, it's like your immersive cinema. You, you're pure, you're created something that's very pure cinema. It's, it's, uh, but it, it's also this process that allows for so much discovery about making the show, like things you can never anticipate, but you only can learn through the making of this. So in a way, the episodic is a gift because as you continue doing this, and then and then you have this whole other uh, thing placed on top of it, which is of course the quarantine, which forces you into a, another direction and level of, of which will provide so much you're gonna learn about yourselves, about the process of doing something like this. And if you're open to it, my gosh, it seems like, it's a, what a gift, you know. Um, it, it was n not an easy decision to go and shoot the second, um, you know, in terms of format. Right. Really the, the second you, season was done on Zoom, in other yeah. words, or whatever the, you did. The, to. Fir the, the first season was really a proof of concept. I, 
I call it the pilot of the poor. So this is why it was shot my, in my living room um, and uh, with friends, basically. Uh, I mean, real actors, but uh, people helping me to put it together. <clears throat> and, and a wonderful cameraman, Luke Geisbilla, you know, who is really a, a master of the camera and of the handheld camera. Um, you, you know, he shot the two Borat films, uh, but also lots of wonderful documentaries. He has a wonderful range of work and um, he's been a real collaborator. Though on this one, he couldn't do anything uh, because- On, on the you know, second he, season. On the second season, the second, uh, well, we call it a season. Uh, it's a bit of a stretch. It's, I call it the sequel to our proof of concept that we, <laughs> that we, for, we reformat for YouTube. Um, and, you know, when COVID struck, we were uh, in the process of pitching and uh, everything to networks. Um, and we, and were and we were presenting, we were presenting as, as a one hour long, um, oh, okay. you know, these, these two sessions, the two sessions of what is now season one on the, on the, on the web um, is, um, and, the, and, and basically, it was actually my, my girlfriend works uh, in social media analytics. And I told her, I was lamenting and saying, Oh, Hollywood has, you know, shut off. And, you know, we can't do anything. She says, No, we are hyperactive in social media. This is really not a quiet time uh, confinement. Uh, this is a very active time. She kept working long hours. And she says, Just put it up, put it up on YouTube you know, segment it in a way that is digestible for YouTube. And, and, and I came to basically recut the hour long proof of concepts, the two one hour long proof of concept into 14 minutes, 15 minutes uh, episodes. We even going short over the second season with 13 minutes, 12, 13 minute episode. Uh, so, and I discovered a couple of interesting thing is that, um, what we were working with, what I was editing, there's a lot to be, uh, interesting stuff to be said about the editing, but basically the, the material we were coming up with was highly malleable in terms of duration and segment. So we could make, you know, uh, easily two half an hour uh, uh, parts out of a one hour uh, session, but we also could do four, uh, 15 minutes piece, so five. I, I find lots of places to interrupt this because the interruption in itself becomes interesting. The, inter yeah, like the interruption actually. becomes, if it's in the right spot, it becomes, right. it becomes like a sort of exclamation point underlying what has just been going on. And I realized it's so dense with interaction and psychological uh, complexity that People see more of the same one hour material when it's presented in shorter, you know, 12 or 15 minute bits. They just, they focus uh, on, on that, sh in that shorter format. Um, so we learned that. Jack was not quite happy. I with... was highly skeptical. Yes. Uh, I was totally in love with the one hour version. And I thought, well, this, this is approaching uh, or approximating the feel of an actual psychiatric session, you know, or therapeutic session. And it can't possibly work at a short form. And as Alexi said, what we've learned is it actually works at any length. Uh, if, when the actors are bringing their A game, when Elliot, the therapist is bringing his A game, you know, it, it just works at, mm -hmm. at any length. Jack, uh, my friend, Jack Wechner. Exec, uh, producer, or is it executive? Producer? I'm one of the executive producers, You're one of the along with Ronald Gutman and uh, Doug Schwalbe. Two questions for you. Uh, one is, how, how did you, of course, the question is how, how you came on board and uh, your relationship with, with, uh, with uh, Alexi, but also part two, do you have personal uh, experience with therapy yourself? Um, I dare say just about everyone involved in this project has personal experience with therapy. I, I've been in therapy at various times in my life with various different therapists. And I have to say, it's helped me enormously. Um, a few years ago, I was really depressed. Um, re the, the, the only time in my life when I've been actually just in a total funk. 
and uh, found a wonderful therapist to really help me out of it. Um, so yeah, I, I've never been in group therapy, um, although I feel like I have, having spent so much time in sure. this uh, fictional group therapy world. Um, but backing up, uh, um, I actually met Alexi uh, at this point um, about uh, almost 30 years ago uh, when we were both expatriates in London working in the film industry there. Uh, Lexi was running uh, Pefe, the uh, French uh, European distributor, and uh, I was uh, working at Channel 4 uh, on Film 4. And uh, so we met each other at that time, uh, but uh, had not actually stayed in contact. Um, but one of the other executive producers, our mutual friend Doug Schwalbe, uh, um, was working at DreamWorks and advising Alexi through the making of uh, the first uh, web season, the first proof of concept, um, which I was not involved with making. And uh, as Alexi got uh, finished editing it and was ready to pitch it, uh, Doug said, you really need to find someone who can help you navigate the waters of American television and uh, um, sent it to me. And I thought, oh, God, you know, first of all, if it, you know, a show about group therapy, this this could be terrible. And second, you know, I, I like and respect Alexi and what if his show is terrible and what if I have to tell him how terrible it is, you know, uh, so I was kind of dreading it. And then I, of course, started watching it and it was the opposite of terrible. It was extraordinary. Um, and it's one of the few times when I just thought, oh, yeah, I'm all in for this. I'll just uh, wh wherever this goes, I, I want to be part of it. Uh, well, one one sort of uh, bad apple. Uh, it's not a, those are now police officers, right? Uh, so I have to change the expression again. Uh, one one weak actor could really just uh, sabotage Absolutely. this entire thing. It's, it's, a, it's a link fence in that, or it's a chain, I should say. So uh, yep. um, I, it works because- to, uh, to, be, to, to be devil's advocate, I would say that one weak, weak actor would be wonderfully interesting to introduce because <laughs> the, the group would well, make him be good elevate him. well destroy what is weak you about failed him. you failed at that <laughs> the cast is amazing um they are very good. alexi yeah. can talk about how how they were uh, i was uh, okay do that but i mean i was at first a little distracted because they're all so beautiful and uh, <laughs> i'm like I don't remember this from my parents' group therapy in the 1970s. They were attractive people. To, uh, uh, Elliot Zeisel actually just uh, um, heard this from another therapist who was complimenting the show, but said, uh, I have to uh, call you out on one thing, which is I have never had a group in 35 years that was this attractive. Yeah. It's not healthy to have a crush on a group, is it? <laughs> oh, it's super healthy. <laughs> it's part of the process. It's transference. <laughs> okay. Well, talk about the yeah the casting and uh, the actors and um, you know I mean I think that actors and therapy go together. That's they're they're constantly psychoanalyzing. So um, they're yeah, gonna yes, get. I, I think it's wonderfully interesting to see how close it is, but also how important it is to keep it separate. Uh, acting is not a therapy, uh, and therapy is not about acting. However, the, the sort of bridges are numerous and, and the connections are close, not to talk about the historical birth of psychoanalysis and cinema and modern acting. Uh, it, 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 it has followed you know, historically um, a, a very similar path. Uh, and it's, it's, it's rarely being explored, you know, in, let's say, in a granular detail and in depth. Um, <clears throat> And just a little aside, I, you know, for 30 years I worked in film and I sort of told myself, never will I approach the field of psychoanalysis. Uh, my father was a, a psychoanalyst and a psychiatrist and my great uncle and two uncles of mine, that basically was their field. And, uh, and I established a, 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 a border not to be crossed, um, which of course my father passed away 80 years ago and that border became more interesting to explore and actually say, actually, I don't need that board. Uh, and that's how it became a very personal project of mine. I let what, what was supposed to be 
you know, uh, a not, you know, a forbidden uh, uh, wall between that these two worlds that are actually pretty interestingly close. You know, Hitchcock was fascinated by that, and you know, mo a lot of great uh, of great filmmakers. And I, I insist on this because in the casting process, I was really looking for actors who would both have an understanding of the therapy process, not in beating group therapy, but uh, you know, most had had some experience of individual therapy uh, or couples therapy. Uh, but I was not looking for that. I was looking for actors who would be able to run with the ball, who would be able to take the risk of <clears throat> creating a character uh, as it goes, uh, you know, building as, you know, as the plane was flying, building that plane while it was flying. Uh, and, uh, and, and just not be defensive about uh, the more precious part of their emotional landscape. Um, I started casting in a more traditional way, one-to-one, -one, and met some very interesting actors. Uh, but as soon as we did the second part of the test, uh, sort of test casting, which was to meet um, with Elliot and conduct a mini group, improvised group session, some of the most, you know, convincing actors in a one-to-one, -one, and because of their, you know, uh, their experience and their filmography um, or their work on stage, almost collapsed uh, in the group setting. They didn't have lines to say, and it became too intense and too personal and too raw. On the other hand, some actors who had slightly less acting, you know, um, uh, prestige, uh, but were really all extremely intelligent, talented, creative, but more than anything, trusting their own skill and being ready to take risks with creating character on the fly. They revealed themselves to be fantastic in a group setting. So after sort of a month trying casting in a more, you know, the, the more conventional way, I started going directly in casting by, you know, casting myself uh, by doing improvised group session with uh, Dr. Zeisel, with myself playing a French filmmaker in New York and a couple of other um, of the actors. You know, uh, one of the reasons it worked well for the actors is that two of the, Two of the actors in what you saw are both professional you know, actors, but also uh, group members of Dr. Zeiser. Uh, and uh, that's this true. Is, wow. It's the character of Frank and the character of Karina. And Gabby Cohen uh, and Ezra Barnes, who are both brilliant actors. And we have, and we have them come room, and they're through. joining us right now. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, should, I, I was realizing uh, I should have, uh, I should have, should so have nice. done that. We should have invited them. Uh, maybe. I shouldn't say should. We can do a second would, one. Would have been an opportunity. Yeah, we can do a part two, because uh, mm -hmm. I think it would work very well. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I just feel trapped and I'm scared. The truth be told, you were trapped before COVID, and now you're trapped uh, with COVID. Activism ju just isn't marching, protesting. Yeah. I didn't just learn that racism started yesterday. I haven't in been touched office. in two months. I so, also have been going on dates. Ah. You have an expiration date? I don't really want to talk about this right now. Okay. <clears throat> I guess we all have expiration dates, right? You know what? I'm pissed at all of you. I am fucking miserable. And I'm owning it. I'm angry at you. I think Why? you really, because I think you milk your shit sometimes. Have your relationship in front of these people and let's see what happens. I feel my heart beating fast. I feel it in my loins. I feel it like everywhere, but I also feel like panic in my head of like, what are you getting into? I get in the car right now and drive to New York. I don't fucking care. I'm breaking rules left and right. What are you doing, what? Frank? Are you having an affair? I'm kind of turned on by your vulnerability and your boldness. I'm not ready to go back to rules as normal because the world isn't rules as normal yet. It's a new world. It's a different world. Yeah, they're wonderful. They love it. And they have been these two actors uh, who have, who are, you know, who are real group members of Dr. Zeisel have helped the other actors learn the language 
of group therapy. Learn where to basically, right. where you, you choose what to disclose and not to disclose. You don't need to reveal everything. You don't have to confess every little thing about yourself. You actually choose where you go. It is, uh, I keep comparing it to two things. Um, and the casting was very much like this. It is uh, like trapeze artists who are ready to do it without a net. It is more interesting for an audience. It gives you more of a feel of reality and the real risk that the trapeze artists are taking. If they do it from 10 feet high over concrete, then if they do it from 50 feet high with a safety net, we all know that if there is a safety net, they can't hurt themselves. We know that 10 feet high, they can really hurt themselves doing a double or triple somersault and trusting one another to do so. And not, you know, some actors have that gift and have the intelligence of knowing their skill to do so. So to me, it was very much say, okay, you're a trapeze artist. We're gonna do this just for 10 minutes, but we're not going to have a net. Are you good with that? Um, uh, and, and some are, and some said, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And it, it, it became a very simple casting process, you know. Uh, uh, the, the, the actors who um, are in the show really were, it, it was obvious that they were, you know, they were, they were ready to go. And uh, we, did, we did rehearse, we never rehearsed the narrative situation, the scripted part. We didn't rehearse because I wanted it to be fresh. Otherwise, you know, improvisation doesn't really work if it's not fresh enough. But we rehearsed the backstory and we rehearsed, basically I told them, let's go six months before uh, the first, you know, proof of concept that you saw, the first web series. Let's rehearse what happened in that group six months before, and three months before, and two weeks before. So we, we went into totally different stuff so that we wouldn't touch the, um, the right. narrative material that you're seeing, but it allowed them to really build their character. Right. Um, and, um, and to also go in that particular sort of surfing mode where they let some very personal emotional truth uh, be, you know, they, they sort of, they use uh, that fuel and that reality and they give them the costume of, um, of, of the character that is being created. It's a wonderful thing for actors, I think. Uh, it sounds like it's a wonderful opportunity for actors. A, uh, I was thinking uh, if you really want to do an episode where you are, uh, you know, work without a net, you could t optimize YouTube in the future at some point and do a live episode. We've talked about that. Uh, have we you? Had the, yeah, we have, although it's not a, so much that we've actually done idea. it. Maybe. Sorry, Jeff? We, we, uh, the, the problem with doing that, uh, and I think the reason we haven't done it, is because so much of what you've seen is the product of painstaking and artful work by Alexi in post, uh, in which he is taking the, you know, the raw sessions and weaving them into uh, filmmaking. Uh, and that, you know, it, it's... <laughs> For every you know minute that was shot, there's probably hours of post production. It's a little stunty. Yeah. For this, yeah. Uh, what does it mean, stunty? Stunt. It's a bit of a oh, doing a live episode. Yeah, that's yes. right. It's a kind of a stunt in a sense, and it's not really taking into account what you're trying to achieve in a broader way. You know, maybe. I think it would be interesting, but it it I what would be different, you know. Of course, there is the famous Orson Welles uh, quote of, you know, you write a film three times. First, when you do the script, second, when you shoot it, and third, in, in editing, in post, because you, it, post is really a form of writing. And um, especially because I let the, um, the camera and the actors run free with the ball for 90 minutes in every take, there was a lot of rewriting, let's say in post. Uh, I'm mixing, you know, take one and take three and take two. Things don't happen in the same order. So nothing is fake, it's all real. It's just in a way rebuilt in a narrative way uh, to help viewers 
you know, I, I hope it, it doesn't, you know, my ideal is that people think it actually was the natural order of things. That's my goal. Uh, uh, but it's, you know, if you listen to the, if you listen to the, to the, the dailies, the 90 minute takes, it's very different. Uh, and I, I have to say there was one thing really critical and interesting about the editing is that um, I didn't know how to edit and, and it's actually um, my friend Luke Geispiller, the, the, uh, the DP, the cameraman who said, maybe you should try doing what uh, they used to do in documentary. You do a radio cut. Radio cut is you don't take a look at any video. You just work with the sound. You do your radio cut. And then you find the, you know, the, the, the pictures that match it. And right. because this is so driven by uh, talking and the special grammar of, you know, eight people, eight subconscious talking to one another, exchanging, I thought, ah, let's give it a go. Um, and so I brought uh, into that really it's bizarre- It's but also I it's, wanted to say, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was also going to say, though, that this is a case, it's true, it's all talk driven. So you might think it could work as a, and it could work as a radio audio experience as well, yeah. the show. However, interestingly enough, there's another layer to therapy where, uh, and the psychological process where you may not know that your body language is extraordinarily important. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Fancy, of course. I but mean, that's right. That that's why that's where I discovered something interesting. I discovered that if I first did a blind cut and my my first cut of the whole thing is always blind. I don't watch anything. I do it without, you know, I do it uh, completely on paper, uh, taking notes on the soundtracks. I put together the soundtrack and when I'm happy with the soundtrack or happy enough, I look at, you know, what what is, you know, what is the video material we have, uh, the images? And uh, especially in season one, because you know, season two was different. We had eight little iPhones. So I had plenty of material to cut from. In Just to be clear, one, even really though it camera. was the, the actors in season two interacted over Zoom and we did record the Zoom interface, but each actor was filming themselves with their own phone or camera right. and recording and themselves with yeah. uh, that and with garage band but in season one i just Audio. had two cameras one was on the therapist this sort of a fixed camera on a tripod uh to be able to cut but then it was just one camera that was going around uh, in the room and i realized that what i had cut blind the radio cuts about 30 percent of what i had was totally unusable visually but i didn't want to change the cuts so i worked for weeks on finding reaction shots that would be uh, meaningful reaction shots. And it, by, necess by necessity, in a way, it became a sort of um, editing style that is heavy on reaction shots, which I was comfortable with because that was my experience of being in group where, of course, you watch the person who's talking, but half the time, you are not watching the person who's talking. You're, per, you're watching the others, how they react, and you're watching their body language. And I realized I could use that constraint of my strange little method to the benefit of having something, you know, it, it was Milish Foreman uh, who famously shot uh, a number of scenes uh, by saying, if you have something very intense emotionally, take a, take a look at what the character who's not talking is doing. Take a look at the reaction, the emotional reaction of the character who is involved in the scene, but is not doing the talking. Um, so as audience members, we're really used to see the people who are doing the talking, but we are really, it becomes really interesting to see the people who are not doing the talking. Uh, and um, you may have noticed that the editing style is really heavy with reaction shots where I, I really have, uh, have used that to, uh, to give the, the viewer a sense of how important the listening part is. Mm -hmm. The listening part by the therapist whose profession it is to listen, but by other group members 
who the process become therapeutic because every group member tries to understand you know the person who's talking and that process which is very much a listening process is is the core of the method and so i wanted to film that as much as filming people who were talking and this style right. then becomes kind of cubed in season two because it, it you have uh, the eight actors each in their box and Alexi was very clear from the beginning that he didn't want to just uh, use the Zoom interface, which we're all heartily sick of, uh, and which also reduces each person to like, you know, a, a, a tiny little element in a mosaic. Yes. Um, and so the first cut of, of season two, uh, Alexi did it all in singles um, after the in introduction, uh, which worked brilliantly well. And I thought, well, this is, you know, it's not gonna get better than this. But Alexi was determined to actually use split screens and try and keep that feeling of each character listening to the others and spending as much time on the characters who aren't talking as the ones who are. And, uh, you know, I will say once again, I was skeptical, but it really paid off. And uh, over the course of the series, you just see these extraordinary moments where it, the drama is carried not only by the person who is talking, but by uh, the the way that the others are reacting to that person. It you know it might be the first cinematic experience I've had watching the, you know the Zoom, essentially something shot with the Zoom technology. Um, well, thank you. I you know, we all dislike Zoom so much that it's the but only we way also we love can it. Do it. We we yeah, really we love it because we need it okay. and oh, well, we grateful. survive through Zoom. But we can sort of use the good side of Zoom to recreate a visual experience. Um, there is, uh, but you opened up one 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 um, door for me because I wasn't. I've been in indi individual therapy and couples therapy, uh, but not group therapy either. Jack said he wasn't. I just never had group mm -hmm. therapy. Uh, but uh, and my assumption. I, about I will say I did have. Uh, I okay. don't, don't mean to cut you off, but I did have one day of group therapy in that Elliot Zeisel actually invited me to join one of his groups. That counts. Uh, and I, I, I did for one day. And first of all, uh, someone that I knew turned out to be in the group. So that was awkwardness number one. And awkwardness it number two was that when the other members of the group discovered that I was working with Elliot on the show, there was an enormous uproar and uh you know vitriol directed in all directions you know you know that i was just you know studying them like uh you right. know a, a, um, a lepidopterist you know and uh i i came out of it was one of the most fascinating experiences i've ever had and also watching elliot you know do his thing is you know he's a master at, at this craft but afterward i said there is no way I am ever coming back to this group, and I'm kind of sorry <laughs> that I brought such chaos to your group. And Elliot said, "Are you kidding? That was a wonderful yeah, session. Yeah, we right. got months of material out of that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, also, well, I, I mean, people like me who've not experienced it, even though I was one degree from them, my parents, and they were part of our social world. My my parents had parties, or they, you know, I got to know their group members. Into, I mean, really well growing up, they were always around they, they they socialized you know and um i was very fond of a number of them and so but i, I was going to say my assumption as somebody who's not done, been in group therapy was that it's about talking and uh, getting response to your talking about your problems and you would it would open you up in a way maybe a different kind of way however i'm learning that it i have the maybe the opposite the inverse is the true word it's it's you as your experience listening to them that it, makes, it's that even more complicated you, than that, that helps you uh, grow and learn about yourself one of the things that we've learned about group therapy in the course of doing this um is the whole history of group therapy is fascinating that it really grew out of uh, world war ii where there weren't enough therapists to work with the returning veterans who desperately needed therapy so right. in yes. desperation uh, yeah. as a last resort they had multiple patients working with one wow. therapist but they found that those patients were actually doing better than the ones in individual therapy makes sense so that there was something going on in the group process that they then had to study and codify 
and uh, Irvin Yalom, uh, the uh, writer of the book, the Schopenhauer Cure, was one of those uh, pioneering uh, therapists, as was a guy named uh, Lou Ormont, who was Elliot Seisel's mentor. And, uh, and they eventually came to codify this whole theory of group therapy, which is that uh, the, the members of the group you know, it's sort of the way that you have a transference with your individual therapist and individual therapy, where it's actually not a bug, but a feature, not a bug, but a feature that you actually, you know, see your father, see your uh, lover, you know, see your spouse at, in your therapist, that, that, in fact, in group therapy, you're kind of sprinkling all the different people that you were dealing with, forces you were dealing with, parts of yourself you were dealing with, into the other members of the group. Um, so yeah, uh, listening to the other, it's not just listening to the other members of the group, but engaging with the other members of the group and experiencing their struggles really as sort of a proxy for whatever you are dealing with. And what's remarkable is, you know, I think that's actually kind of going on for people who watch this show. And we've gotten that comment. Uh, I think uh, Alexi's girlfriend, Tracy, was the first person who said that, that I feel like I'm going through group therapy by proxy just by watching the show. And a lot of people have actually said that, uh, that, you know, it obviously it isn't targeted therapy and that we don't know what your problems are when you watch this. We can't promise that the concerns of the group are going to re resonate with your problems in your own life. But I do think there is an experience that you have in going through these events, these uh, these issues, these concerns with these characters that I always come out feeling better. Yeah, no, I, I, I think just their um, moments of clarity and of uh, catharsis, catharsisism. Catharsis, yeah. Catharsis, thank you. Uh, uh, you, it's uh, it's hard not to um, uh, join them on those moments uh, when I was watching. You know, I mean the the opening two episodes of the second season, as we said, were in quarantine over Zoom and discussing all the uh, emotions <clears throat> that we're all experiencing through yep. this period, and it's a very, it's cathartic watching that. You know. Um, yeah, there, um, there is, you it, know, when you, you know, go to group once a week, um, there are two things about it that to me are very particular and interesting and, and unique to it is that it's an experience in unpredictability. You never know what's going to happen. You know that there are moments where it's going to be moving uh, emotionally, touching, and moments that's going to be generally funny. I have never been to a 90 minute session of group of, of, of Zizel where I didn't really laugh and didn't really either cry or want to cry. But it was never for reasons I could have foretold, you know, the minute I entered the room. It was always a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, and it happened in the same way uh, in, you know, in our film sessions. The tears and the laughters are some of them are, are the unscripted part. Uh, I know that the narrative situations can lead themselves to moments of comic relief or moments of genuine emotion, but the tears and the laughter is never, you know, this is the time where you're gonna go for comic relief. It just happens by itself, by it's a balance, it's a necessary balance of, you know, eight or nine psyches being in the same aquarium for 90 minutes, it goes deep in drama, in distress, but it goes funny as well, which I always thought was the, uh, you know, the, 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 the heart, the core of the project is that compared to uh, other film um, productions that show individual sessions or couples therapy, when you have eight people in the room, it becomes so dynamic it becomes so unpredictable and it becomes so funny at times at moving in ways that is like this eight band ping pong of subconscious that you have no idea where it goes. That's the first experience I had and I wanted to sort of transcribe and, and, and re represent it on screen. The second is that even if you are uh, 
experiencing some some intense emotions, you leave the room. You know, uh, a feel good mood is really uh, it doesn't even come close to it, but it does come a little close to it. Is that uh, there is something of a um, it's a very special mental mood you're in at that you walk out of that session compared to the one you walk in. You know, we live New Yorker lives that are full of stress and pressure and, and uh, you know, uh, and, and, and stresses. Uh, I don't find the right words, but basically we have a hard time to take a step back and go into something more uh, deep, more personal, more emotional. When we do this, it doesn't make you sad. It doesn't make you, you know, happy, happy, but it puts you in a different space, mental space, when you walk out of these sessions. And I want, I, I was basically, my goal is to create that feeling after you view uh, either a session, but more likely a season, that you're in a different mental space. And it's, it might be uncomfortable, but there's also something that is comforting about it. Um, and, and it's a very particular mood. It's actually not dissimilar to going to a great, you know, music uh, production, live music. Uh, you go, whether it's, whether it's a jazz session or, or the opera, in a certain mood, you come out and your heart and your soul is just in a different space. There is something in its own respect different, but not dissimilar with, uh, with the experience of group. Uh, because one of the critical things, which is some misunderstanding lots of people have, is that group therapy is not about support. People are not there to support one another. They're not there to pat themselves in the back. Actually, the first lesson you, you get quickly in group therapy is that it's confrontational. That it is the confrontational, it's basically taking, you know, not, not accepting any bullshit. If there's anything fake, it's going to be called on. It's going to be called on it, yeah. Uh, and that process of people really saying what they feel and what they think in the moment is a sort of lit, it's an acid test of truth that eventually is tough, but really uh, beneficial and, and really heartwarming. Uh, it's the series is called Therapy. You can find it on YouTube. You it's go called, to YouTube. No, the seri series is called Group. Group. Let me yep. rephrase. <laughs> Thank you very much. The series is called Group. So you can find it on YouTube. What's the exact address so people can? Uh, I actually have it right here. Uh, if you go to um, uh, youtube.com slash uh, uh, group the series, all one word, youtube.com. And if you if you search YouTube for group or group the series, uh, I have to say uh, it. Uh, one of the problems with having a show called Group is if you Google Group, you'll just find lots of things that have nothing to do with our show. If you Google Group the series, it'll come right up. It, uh, but we have now finally started to get enough views on YouTube that if you just put Group into YouTube, we come up pretty quickly. That's good. That's great. But we'll provide the link on our, you know, uh, show notes and all that stuff anyway. But um, subscribe is my point. You know, and um, uh, you know, um, it's directed, written by uh, Alexi Lloyd, and uh, executive produced uh, in part, right, by by Jack Lechner. Yeah, uh, along with uh, uh, Ronald Gutman and uh, Doug uh, Doug Schwabe. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, uh, I, I I urge people to check it out, and um, you know, merci messieurs. Thank you, Adam. Merci. Merci, Monsieur uh, Adam. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll do it again. I'd love to do it again, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we can invite, uh, um, you know. Some actors. Yeah, and that would be great Kaiser. because they are yeah. extraordinary. Yeah, they are, uh, truly. And, um, you know, it's great to see such great, it, again, it's very immersive. It's, it's, it, there's an element of theater, of, of having a theater experience as well, um, stage type of experience too. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the, we can maybe invite the doctor. <laughs> yes, yep. sure. See how, how far he's going to go in this 
um, thank you guys. And um, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing all, uh, all of the uh, second season as soon as possible. Let's get, thank get you, busy. Thank all you, right. Eddie. Thank you.